What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Tiger Talk. We bring you the faces behind Fort Hayes State. Joining us today is my close friend and classmate, Matthew Hazelhorse. Matthew, glad to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be here, Omar. All right on, right on, right on. Uh, so, hey, man, we normally have conversations on the daily, never something like this. Yeah, so say, this is a first for me. You never had a mic in front of my face when I talk. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's it's a little different. So, yeah, I mean, wow, I've known you for xyz how many years oh shoot yeah i mean i don't know since uh, elementary school that's for sure yeah yeah you're the kid i, I man that's something about matthew i, I used to uh, I, not that i didn't like him but he was just always geeky to me and then now we're yeah. best friends so yeah, we, me and matthew been friends for, for about the same time if not a lot of bit longer yeah now. yeah this is true i mean uh brian and everyone boy scouts and no like freaking omar over here i mean I thought this guy was a jock, and he was all the sports guy, and I thought I was a nerd. But far from it, far from it. Very far from it. Uh, one of the, one of the memories I have of Matthew, because uh, we went to obviously we went to Sacred Heart together. Um, I remember being on the playground and Matt running around doing whatever, and I tripped him, and he <laughs> fell to the ground. Uh, that happened more often than you might think. <laughs> so yeah, man, I know you. Uh, you weren't. Uh, where were you born? I was actually born here in Hayes, uh, ironically. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I never actually lived here, though. I uh, ended up moving over to uh, Nest City, Kansas. Right. Or I guess I didn't move there, but that was where I originally was from. And then Great Bend for four years, and then I pretty much call home Dodge City because I've been there the longest, and I had my best growing years there. So. Yep. Yeah, and I met everybody that I know is from <laughs> Dodge City. Yeah, I know. I. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know you were... I didn't know you were born in Hayes. I thought you were born in like Great Bend or something. Or oh, Nest no, City. no. Yeah, um, because uh, we were in Nest City. It's a small town. Not a whole lot of uh, bigger towns close. I guess Dodge City is pretty close to Ness compared to Hayes. but Right. No, it was a better hospital um, in my parents' mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can feel that. Better than Dodge? I would say so. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my mom's refused to go to the hospital in Dodge unless it's like an absolute emergency. She'll go to Jetmore, Mineola. Yeah. Just because she's had some pretty bad... I don't know who is all listening, so I'll refrain from getting some specific names on the hospital there. Oh, yeah. Totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, born in Hayes, grew up in uh, Great Bend Nest City, and mm -hmm. uh, grew up for the better part of your life in Dodge. Now we're back in Hayes. How, how's how's uh, Hayes treating you? Well, I mean, I love Hayes. Uh, Dodge City, it's, it's a great place to be, a great place to grow up. It's actually, it's kind of crazy how nice it was in Dodge, because... We always thought it was kind of a big brute of a town when we lived in Great Bend. Right. And my parents thought we would never move there. And then we ended up moving there. And people are actually pretty nice. I mean, now that I'm moving out of Dodge City, it's kind of nice to have a breather. But every college kid thinks that when they move away. Oh, yeah. Especially now. Especially now. I yeah. I love my family. Don't get me wrong. But I, I honestly don't see myself moving back to Dodge. Same here. Like, it's a great place. But I need to explore a bit more adventure. Absolutely. Like, um... Yeah, I'm I'm visiting uh, my girlfriend Savannah, <laughs> in uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, going to Austin, and oh my goodness, I I I can I can't do the big city, I just can't. But um, I don't know something about the commute time and crime rates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that's a great thing about Hayes is the atmosphere here. Well, the atmosphere here when the college students are here, <laughs> when the college students leave, it's like the town kind of becomes meh. But yeah, but when everybody's here for school, it feels like a it feels like a bigger city in a really small town, and I really like that feel. Yeah, I think I've looked up the population comparison from Dodge and Hayes, and you'd think Hayes was a lot bigger, but I think Hayes is a lot bigger during the school year. Yeah, yeah. especially when you count college kids and all that. And the town's just more alive. I feel Dodge. It's not a whole lot of stuff to do. No, not at all. Except I don't know. One of the most Park interesting during the summer and the casino. I mean, that's really their big hot spots in Dodge. Yeah, there's really nothing to do yeah. versus, I mean, yeah. I guess we kind of make our own fun here. I mean, we're all from, we all live in Hayes. This, this is true. Yeah. Oh, well, then again, we, me and you, we disc golf almost on the daily. Oh, yeah. We, that's one thing that's that's nice about, I mean, Dodge is getting there. Of course, it has like, what, three courses, four think, courses now? I think three or four 18 holes now. Yeah. College, Chilton Park, high school, and then there's one up north. That, pri that private one. Yep. Yeah. Duck uh, Creek. We need to go to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so anyways, uh, how's school going? Well, school is school. We're, yeah, we're both uh, the same. Well, I guess we were the same majors. Now you're, well, you're ditching. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm ditching. Well, at the moment, I'm in finance, but I'm going to be changing over to uh, probably business general, or general business, get that backwards. <laughs> um, 
it's just not i didn't like the feel of it and uh my sights are set elsewhere now i'm actually thinking about aviation now ah yeah i'm uh that's why I want to get done with school here. I just want to go to general business degree, knock this major out, get that put on my resume, and then uh, work for a couple of years and head off to flight school, hopefully, and work for a big uh, air... I guess, I guess it's not an airport industry, but airline. Still, that's pretty freaking I awesome. I go to flight school. I know there's one in Salina. Oh, yeah. Is that the Kansas K-State State Polytech? K-State, yeah. yeah, Polytech. Zane Warden, if you remember him from band, he, he's oh, out yeah. there. Yeah. He's there now? Yeah. I saw him over, I saw him over the summer. Yeah. Oh, wait, is he actually going to school there now? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I know he wanted a major in history. Program has been delayed, paused because of all this, but I think he's back on track now. That's cool. But yeah, um, Polytech, that's a big uh, possibility of me going there. There's also a, a guy here out at Hayes Airport, um, and it, they're paired with a Kratz aircraft out of Dodge City, actually. Oh, right. So that actually works well for me if I want to be around family. But they have a decently cheap commercial pilot program, I think. So I might... Uh, look into that but it's still a ways out because i got to save up for it in the first place yeah they're pretty expensive but i don't know when anything comes to i mean if it's something you want to do definitely yeah. I mean, you got to step on it because yeah, okay. yeah. i don't know these last couple of years i've just made a lot of realization especially i mean even in the last couple months but no kidding you just got to do whatever the heck makes you happy well coronavirus you've really figured that out yeah <laughs> yeah i spent a lot of time thinking yeah, yeah it's crazy so i mean i used to be um I don't know. I wanted to impress everybody around me, but now it's more like I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Do it on a spiritual level. Yep. Achieve what I gotta <laughs> so, achieve. What I want to yeah. achieve. I never thought about going to grad school, but well, I guess I did, but I just never wanted to because I felt I don't know, waste of time. Maybe not a waste of time, but I just didn't want to waste any more years. So. Yeah. But now it's like, I mean, in the long term, if I wanna, I don't know, make more money, achieve my financial goals, uh, get a big house. Um, Savannah, she she wants a farm with giraffes and chickens. She wants to potty train chickens. Wait, did you say with giraffes? Giraffes. I don't know. A giraffe. All right. All right. She told me I was talking on the phone the other day. She said we gotta have a giraffe. That would be okay. interesting to know the cost of one giraffe. I I honestly think that's very illegal to uh, own a giraffe. But I'm about to pull a Joe Rogan here and look up <laughs> Chinese chickens too. I guess Chinese chickens are are, uh, are are pretty, and she wants to potty train one. So. Wow. Chinese chickens. What is a Chinese chicken? I don't know, but <laughs> I guess... I've never heard of a Chinese chicken. I guess oh it... Oh, my gosh. So a giraffe, <laughs> they range on an average from 40000 to $80,000 a piece. No. I like how I'm talking a piece. Like well, I like there's a price point on giraffes <laughs> as if you can own one re- residentially. It's like yeah. those guys that own lions or something, and they just walk them around like Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen my brother... Um, he lived in Dallas for a little bit, and uh, he sent me a video. This guy was, like, walking his rabbit. He had a leash on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a well-trained rabbit. <laughs> yeah, those things real. don't really walk like a cat. Well, they just, I mean, he just following it around. was hopping along. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you were talking about Savannah and a farm. Yes, yes. She wants to potty train a chicken. So if I want to achieve my financial goals and have a giraffe and Chinese chickens, then i got to work hard. Wow. So. That is a big financial goal. <laughs> you have to accommodate some space for that thing. Get yeah, yeah. Trees, Absolutely. A couple of acres of land. Out in the country. Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess in Texas. Ooh, I'll, you know, I, now that I'm thinking about this, because I'm really getting deep into this giraffe thing now, <laughs> I wonder how the trees in Texas affect a giraffe's diet. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you're going to have to feed it. That's very true. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could do like zoos do and give them hay and whatnot, but. I, I give them trees. I wonder if it has kids, if they'll, I don't know. That's good. We should probably steer away from that because now I'm getting too into that. I'm about to say, so, really deep down the giraffe hole. Yeah, yeah. So what made you want to get into aviation? Honestly, so my uh, uncle Greg, uh, he's a veterinarian down in Texas, actually with the K-State himself. He's from Cimarron, Kansas. Um, he uh, has just made a lot of great financial decisions in his life, along with my Aunt Amy. Like become a veterinarian? Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty yeah. good financial decision. Uh, you really need to hear his educational story. I can talk about that in a bit if you'd like. Yes, absolutely. But like, um, he has made a lot of great financial decisions, um, and they bought a plane. And uh, before he bought a plane, he was actually already working on his private license. Or private license. Private license. But um, he's not. he's nothing commercial or anything like that. But he's got a four-seater plane now. I think it's a Cessna, 
and I went flying with him. Actually, you were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was great. Scared the, you know, daylights out of you. Daylights out of me. Is that the time you went to Dairy Queen? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. The $100, yes. The hundred dollar ice cream run. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, that's. I love. I he's a humble guy. Just yeah. imagine, like, I don't know. Some people pick. I don't know. I mean. Going to eat out, staying in? No. Where are we flying to to go eat ice cream? Yeah. yeah. Literally. Talk about first world problems. But he didn't even say, hey, do you want to go flying tonight? It was just like, hey, let's go get some ice cream. All right, let's go get some ice cream. Yeah, we're taking a drive. Where are we going? Orange Leaf? We're going to... Shock, you're like shotgun. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're we walk into the nearest 7-Eleven picking up a, some of... What do you have? A freezy freeze? Yeah, no, we're driving up to an airport. <laughs> and flying to go get ice cream. Which is the equivalent of three hours by car. Landing, jumping a fence, going to get ice cream, jumping the fence, and flying back and going home. That Did we jump it. that fence? I don't know if we jumped it or if we actually opened it. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, I think, uh, maybe. It was a you fence. probably jumped it. I probably did. I, I'm a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, um, just um, his success and I don't know. I just I really have always admired aviation. It's always been cool. Like World War II, um uh, those kinds of stories. Uh, there's a lot of, let's say, uh, action with aircraft, and I've just always been fascinated with like B-29s, big planes, and then flying with my uncle Greg first time, and I just loved it. And so I've just always had my eyes set on it. I always wanted to become a pilot once I get enough money. Right. And uh, finally, I went out and um, a couple months ago, I found out you could pay about 150 bucks for an hour of flight time out here at Hayes Airport. What do you mean an hour of flight time? Like, um, you can either go up in the plane and he flies you around and you just take pictures. Or, if you're an aspiring to be pilot, um, like me, he said, <laughs> all right, do you, want, do you want to fly this thing? What do you mean, do you want to fly? He was like, do you want to fly this plane today? Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, he uh, took me out to the tarmac. and uh, I guess they don't call it a tarmac. Um, they took me out to the ramp and uh, showed me the basic controls of the plane. And then we just turned it on, and he had me take off off the airstrip. I have never flown a plane in my life. I don't know anything about it. And he just said, all right, I'm going to take the pedals, and you're going to take the stick and get us up in the air, buddy. And so we went, and I just flew a plane for an hour. Never flown a plane before, and it was amazing. Wow. Yeah, That's awesome. so easy. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, we flew over to uh, where my ancestors grew up, about 20 miles from here over in Gorham. Um, got to see the family farm, flew over Walker Air Force Base, see the huge landing strip the B-29s used to land on. Right. And, uh, it was just amazing. And after that, I was like, yep, yeah, I definitely want to be flying a plane for the rest of my life. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, Yeah, that reminds me of uh, when we went flying with Greg, and we were vertical, and he <laughs> let off. I don't know if he let off the gas, whatever, but we fell for like a couple seconds. Yeah, he put he pushed the stick down and uh, yeah, we we were in a small nosedive for a second. Yeah, butterflies. Oh yeah, no, that's that was farther than butterflies. I just remember because because we could we could hear each other. We had headsets like we have all now, and we could talk to each other. Um, but I just remember hearing Matt say, oh, "Okay." Yeah, I just remember you were white knuckling that handle up. Oh yeah, I I don't know why I, it was the 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 safety handle, whatever you want to call it. But it's not like it would save me. I mean, if we fell thousands of feet to the ground and painted ourselves on the ground. It's not like me holding that handle. I held onto it the whole time. You never know. I wasn't, I wasn't, I, okay, I was like a little terrified. I wasn't like, you know, about to wet myself or anything, but I was still like, oh my goodness. Right. How is this in the air? Cause it's, I mean, it's, I mean, I've flown, we've flown big airplanes, like the big, what are they called? The big Boeings. Yes. Yeah, like 737. Yeah. 737. I've flown on those and Holy cow, it's nothing compared to a little four-seater. Oh, yeah. The you feel around. everything. When we were landing, it was flip-flopping around. Oh, yeah. yeah, like horizontally, we were at a 45-degree angle to the landing strip. Yep. <laughs> right until about the last, like, 100, not even 100, maybe 40, 20 feet before we landed, and the plane straightened out. I, I was nervous. Yep. I admire, I admire the heck out of Greg, though. Anybody who works hard like that and is humble. So, well, okay. Um, I was going to tell you about his educational story. Um, my uncle Greg, um, he went to Kansas State University. Well, here, let me go further back. He grew up in, on a farm in Cimarron, Kansas. Um, his uh, mom and dad are still there today. And uh, he j was always around livestock and um, just that kind of ag 
culture. Right. And he always loved it, and he wanted to be a veterinarian. He loved animals. So he went to school over at K-State. Um, actually met my Aunt Amy. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, they went to school together, and he would spend every single hour of every single day to get his Ph.D., and veterinary, or mm-hmm. I guess to become a doctor. Yeah, the doctor of medicine. Yeah, and oh my, his schedule, it was, I think it was get up at 6 a.m., go to um, class, and then he'll be done with class about 1 in the afternoon, and I might be a little off on these times, but it's roughly close. Right. And then after that, I mean, he'd fit lunch and breakfast in there somewhere, and then he'd spend all afternoon in the library, and then go home, eat dinner with my aunt, and then he'd go back to the library and study again until one or two in the morning and then do that cycle every single day for like two semesters. And these were really tough classes, like 600 plus level classes. And I think he had like 25, 28 credit hours at a time. I mean, I had 21 at one point and that was painful. I can't imagine that. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. How people do it. It's insane. I, it wasn't, uh, I guess here at Fort Hayes, there was a thing where they'd... Uh... I think if you got uh, any credit, you, if you got like twelve or so credit or twelve plus credit hours, you got and well, you got any credit hours over twelve paid for. I think is what it was. So a lot of people would take like 24, 27 credit hours just to reap the benefit of getting uh, free tuition. Wow. Still though, I can't imagine that because I mean anything medicine. I mean I'm I'm in finance too, but anything medical, just, just I don't know how people life. do it. anything science related. No. I, I'll give it. You know, they're talking about all the doctors are for the coronavirus are all heroes. Shoot, before coronavirus, they're heroes. Like, yeah, man, no that kidding. That stuff is beyond me. I can't imagine all that. Yeah, yeah, it's it. Yeah, I actually never took an anatomy course in high school. So. I took one in high school. We uh, we dissected something. Heck, I remember dissecting stuff in uh, frogs and whatnot. Oh, we we this we did a snake, a frog, um. I did a starfish. A rabbit? Once. You did a starfish? Yeah. There's, I mean, it's... I, there's not did you dissect or you just cut it up? I was dissecting for the most part. There's not a whole lot in the starfish to really talk about, unlike a frog. I think it's like, like all everything. cartilage. Yeah. That's pretty much just, I don't know, nothing that I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyways, back to Greg. That guy is... That guy is yeah. smart. And well, I was talking about financial decisions. Um, he married my aunt Amy when she was only nineteen, and he was like twenty-two, something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. Um, but they both went to K State at the same time. She actually graduated with her degree, which I forgot what that was. I want to say it was in teaching. Well, and she's it, a teacher. Oh, she was a teacher. Now she's. Re- yeah, she, yeah, she's actually yeah. getting out of it. But um, yeah, her last day was Friday. I think I saw on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if it was this Friday or next. Anyway, um, she graduated with her bachelor's, I believe, and um, she had all of her schooling paid off already because she had scholarships and whatnot. And immediately she went working full time and she was paying off Greg's tuition, too. Um, So on top of her schooling, she paid off his schooling. So when he graduated with his doctorate, he was already debt free. So they didn't even have to worry about digging themselves out of that hole. Good. That's, yeah. yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. It it was crazy. I mean, she could have gone and had amazing, she could have been advancing her career, but no, she was just working full time, just trying to get some money in, pay off his stuff. So they can both live a great life. True love. And look at them now. They got a plane and. Right. Heck. Yeah. I respect the heck out of them. Yeah. It's because yeah. really good people, really good people. Yeah. We need to go visit them again. We will. Yes, yes, Sometimes absolutely. I need, yeah. to, I need to get some of Greg's uh, motivation every now and then because, holy cow. <laughs> I do Going to be a fifth-year senior because community college didn't do me too good. Um, well, I am a fifth-year senior. Should be yeah. f- finishing up my bachelor's up in – what's that? I like, think they say super senior. Yeah, yeah, I'm a f- super senior, and then on top of that, I'm going to grad school. So mm. – yeah. Congrats on that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's tough, tough decision, but I have a feeling I'll regret it. I, I read a lot of articles that say if you get your MBA, it's – well, the thing about bachelor's and MBA or getting a master's degree in general, a bachelor's is good for, I mean, whatever, the short term, you know, getting a career, getting your foot in the door. But um, a uh, a master's like an MBA, the, the one I want to get – I want to get my MBA in finance, um, that's good long term. Okay. So there's a, a big pay difference between bachelor's and master's, and – Dr. Lloyd, who I talked to a couple weeks ago on on the podcast, he um, 
when he got his MBA, he started working for Coke and he skipped the entry level position and went straight to selling commodities. And wow, yeah, yeah, smart guy, probably one of the smartest guys I know. But who's that? Dr. Robert Lloyd. Oh, Mr. Lloyd. Okay. Mr. Lloyd, yes. Smartest guy west of the Mississippi. Well, I guess I shouldn't say Mr. I should call him Dr. Lloyd, yeah. <laughs> Put some respect that on that. Four. Yeah. You need to check that out. That's a title already. earned. What's that? Episode four. Yes, episode four. If you guys, he uh, talks about uh, his encounters with uh, education and the Russian mafia. So I still haven't heard about that, but Mr. Lloyd, if you're listening, I've heard a lot of good things about you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Heck, we, we met him at the uh, Career and Internship Fair Day. Right. Yes. It's been a while. I, it's hard to remember. Yes. Places. That guy knows anything about anything and everything. So, yeah. Right. I'll listen to that tomorrow. Yes. If I was even motivated, I'd definitely get my PhD, but I don't think I have that much motivation. I definitely don't. That's right. I like a dissertation. Um, yeah. Yeah. My brother-in-law, he's, uh, of course, he's super, uh, one of the super uh, assistant superintendent of the USD 443, but right. um, he's talked about, he's entertaining getting his PhD, but just a dissertation. It's like a 150, 200 page essay that you have to write. Goodness. Yeah, You're I get a small book. Yeah, I guess for PhD school, like you get your master's and you go to get your PhD. I guess it's just all papers that you have to write, and then I think on top of that, like if you work at the university, I think I've talked to Doctor Doctor Sam Schreier and uh, about this, but I guess you have to get X Y Z number of articles posted okay. in like an academic journal. It's crazy. That is intense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I cannot imagine doing that. I remember looking at uh, like looking at the jobs available on Fort Hay State and. They say a master's is preferred, or a master's is a minimum, but a PhD is is preferred. Well, it's cr- I hope so. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. Think about, like, all the professors in math that get their PhDs in math. Uh, I respect those guys. I thought calculus was hard. I thought algebra, college algebra was hard. No, these guys are getting their PhDs in math. Do you remember um, John Vogel? Yes. Matt Vogel's dad. Yes. Dodge. Yeah, I didn't realize how smart that guy was. He, I, I asked him, he's just a, he's a construction worker, a carpenter, basic carpenter handyman, handyman. He can do anything, whatever you need built, he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize how smart the guy was. I was asking him about schooling one time. He took calculus one through like whatever it goes, highest one you can, four, five. Yeah. Like, it goes like calc one, calc two, calc three. Then you have like differential equations and then, um, uh, let's see, linear algebra. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, he did all that and he's a construction dude. I didn't know that could be applied. Well, I guess math. Applied in, in yeah, way. dimensions. I guess. Yeah, when it comes to math, I'm like, Duh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have calculators yeah. and Quizlet and Chegg. Yeah, <laughs> the online calculators for every equation you need. Oh man, yeah. Like I thought, Calc one was hard. You remember when I took Calc? It was a summer, and uh-huh. it's like, what are you doing? Matt, Matt would always just ask me, "What are you doing?" Because we'd hang out a lot, and then I'd say, "Calculus, calculus, <laughs> calculus." Like, God, I guess I'm gonna go play more video games. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I want to, I'm at that point where I just want to be done with school, but I'm like, ah, oh, this is the final stretch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really need motivation to complete my schoolwork now that I'm wanting to get out of this major. I mean, I'm going to complete it, but it's not what I want to do. So, and I think, yeah. sorry, good. So I just need to find that motivation. Yeah. I think a lot of, a lot of, me especially, I just get so caught up in that I have to finish in X amount of time, but I mean, that's really not the truth. I mean, uh, you just got to finish. I feel like everybody has their own time. Like if you finish within 10 years or five years or 30 years or 70 years, you know, mm-hmm. an MBA is still an MBA, a bachelor is still a bachelor's. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, doesn't matter what road you take. It just matters you cross the finish line. There you go. There you go. That's the word of advice for the day. So <laughs> there you go. Um, there you go. People listening. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, uh, wow. Time, mm. we got a lot of limited time on this earth, but I just want to spend it wisely. Yes. Don't spend all your time doing one thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then especially like now, oh my goodness. Like when I say I don't want to go back to Dodge, it's because the people around me and the people that, um, whether they like me, don't like me, have talked about me, have not talked about me, don't know me, think they know me, but don't know me. Right. The amount of negativity that I've... (coughs) Now that I moved out and I surround myself with like a good group of people, because I feel like now I have a really good friend group. Surround yourself with where you want to be. Yes, yeah. yes, with people that add value to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's crazy the amount of difference um, it makes. Well, you be- 
Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. Well, that's like uh, this new job that I'm um, getting. I'm actually going to start working out at SkyWest Airlines. And that whole idea, I just want to be surrounded with that culture. So if I am going to be successful in this airline industry, I want to know every single thing about it. Successful work, people, yes. All of it. Yeah. Yes. I try to take whenever I like even talking to Dr. Lloyd, talking to my professors, I try to learn about them, try to emulate what they do because there's a reason they're successful. There's a reason they get paid. Yeah. I mean, a, a pretty penny. You know, mm -hmm. they did something. Even Greg, yeah. Amy. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Well, it's like in my, my own father, he, he took a definitely different road than Greg. Uh, my dad doesn't really see, I mean, he does see financial successes, success in life because it helps you with other things that you want to do. Yeah. I don't care what people say. Like money is not the most important thing in life, but it does, yeah, it does help. I'd rather have a, a lot more money than, um, average than not enough money. Yeah. Well, it's like for my dad, uh, he's, he, that's, I'm really glad I grew up with my father. It, I'm lucky because he has really taught me that money is not everything. Right. <laughs> it's like sometimes you just need to not be afraid to spend a little bit and oh, just yeah. live. Yes. Because, yes. I mean, I have definitely experienced that. I mean, I uh, could have worked full time over the summer sometimes trying to make as much money as I could when instead... I just got called up by a, a farmer one day and he said, hey, would you quit your job literally right now and meet me out in the field at 9 a.m. tomorrow and you'll go on an adventure cutting wheat from Kansas all the way up to Idaho this summer? Yep. And you uh, did that. Let's go. Yep. So I just quit my job and I went. And what job did you quit? Sunflower? No, no, no. I was actually working at a, a restaurant at the time, waiting tables. And if that wasn't the best decision I made. <laughs> Where were you at? Uh, Gaiman Petro Bar. Ah, uh, yes. Back, I think. I don't even know what it's called anymore. Uh, it's uh, Cowboy Capital. Yeah, that. that's what it's called now. Yeah, that place, interesting place. Yeah, I would uh, because I, you know, I used to work for Culligan. I'd go deliver salt there about every week, and I, I swore I saw new people there every, yeah, every week. Not to talk bad about the place, they have good food. I went there a couple so, times. Sometimes you just need to turn a few people out to get the good eggs. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Definitely go and do some adventures. I've I'm only 21 and I've probably had uh, double digit jobs by now. I've I've probably had at least 12 <laughs> different jobs. I mean, yeah, it doesn't look that great on a resume for uh, an employer. Um, a lot of employers they would rather see. Well, I guess maybe around. yeah, maybe you shouldn't put the 12 jobs in a resume. That'd probably help too. Yeah, just stick to the three. Top, yep. top three, top four maybe. Yeah, top three. Or any any every, what's ever relevant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, go out and get some experience in life. Yeah, it's uh, spending money on experiences. I used to be really cheap. And now, I mean, if it makes me happy, I do it. You know, I bought a motorcycle last year. I uh, bought a moped before that. Right. Um, when I first started talking to Savannah, um, I she, she said to go visit her. And I said, okay. And then, boom, money on a flight. Well, I'd say you were telling me, just jump. Sometimes yeah, you just got to jump. Yes, yeah, Steve Harvey. That's that's if there's anything that um, really spoke to me, it's that sometimes you just got to jump with whatever it is. Like you got to take a risk because the most successful people in life, or whoever, anybody who's had a, 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 a changing experience has jumped. Yeah. Like they've taken that risk, and whether it's uh, relationships, experiences, I don't know, you're jumping out of a plane. Yeah, whatever. You just jump. Yeah, this is true. Man, that reminds me of an. <laughs> this is kind of an unrelatable quote, but this is one that I found the other day from one of my favorite movies called The Kingsman. If, uh, if you've ever watched that, you definitely need to watch it. No, that. I haven't. I thought you were going to say Lonesome Dove. No, uh, there's, there's a lot of good quotes in that one, too. <laughs> but, no, it says, There is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. If that is not my college experience, I don't know what else is. Repeat that. All right. There is not. Okay. There is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Yes, yes, yeah. very. I think uh, college in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. Why do you say that? I uh, okay. So like when I started college, I thought if I was going to be successful, I need to be better than that guy. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes, technically, but at the same time, be better than got be better than that guy be, by being better than yourself because uh, there was a. Matthew McConaughey was talking a long time ago. He said, "Be looking, look five years in the future. That's going to be your hero. My hero is me five years in the future. And then once you get five years in the future, you say, hey, are you are you that guy yet? He said, no, not even close to that guy. 
the guy I want to be is another five years in the future. And you just you got to keep bettering yourself and be better than what you were. Learn from your mistakes. Everyone says learn from your mistakes, but literally learn from your mistakes. Yes. Like, I mean, I can't. <laughs> Girlfriends are a good example of that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> dudes know learn from your mistakes oh yeah oh yeah yeah i uh i definitely take relationships a lot different now like yeah yeah only only add to yourself what's better yes absolutely absolutely yeah if there's one thing um yeah i talk about savannah a lot but uh there's one thing uh yes yes she definitely makes me a better person makes me want to be a better person i think that's the most important part um, well, I'll tell you, I haven't seen you smiling this much since you met her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's gonna, she's gonna smile here and that. But, anyways, um, yeah, it's uh, once you find somebody, or even, I mean, that has the same goals as you, motivates you to be a better person, without even having to motivate you. I mean, you just want to be a better person for somebody else, like true sacrifice. And it's not even a sacrifice, but it's just, I don't know, hard to explain. But uh, right. yeah, you get yeah. my point. But um, yeah, I think that quote about. Um, I I can definitely relate to that in saying that I always thought I had to be better than the next person, the, the person next to me, mm-hmm. you know, somebody else, um, like a good buddy of mine, uh, John Egan, dude, smart, probably one of the smartest guys I know. Yeah. Um, uh, he's majoring in accounting and finance. Um, yeah, I would, uh, he would tell me would get an exam, like on, we took money in banking, I think he, like if I'd get like a 78, he'd get like an 82, I'm like, oh man, like, darn, uh. Yeah, this guy's. Yeah, I guess I'm not good enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I mean, I gotta. Com- I, I don't really have to compare. I'm just saying, hey, I mean, I did my best and I got a good grade. I'm passing. That's it. See Work harder next time. See that 82? That's my next goal. Yes, and then uh, I used to um, like when if somebody else did better than me, it's almost like I would get like slightly jealous, and I don't think that's very right. I like uh, now I just celebrate everybody's victories because I mean we're all in this together. It's a uh, it's a journey, not a competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, to finish off on that last part, um, how I was saying that in the beginning of college, I was um, trying to be better than the next guy. Well, now it's just, well, everybody in college likes to go out and party, have a good time, drink a lot. Yep. <laughs> well, I did that the first year here at Fort Hayes because this is a great place to have a great time. Oh, yep. Absolutely. I found that out. Yep. But after a while, you kind of realize, you know, this is kind of the same thing every weekend. There's a lot more adventures out there that I could be spending my money on rather than more beer and liquor. Yes, absolutely. And if there's one thing that anybody knows about me, don't get me wrong, I don't. I, I drink socially, and um, I don't think I've ever gotten extremely wild. But I, other people could find that as the most fun thing in the world. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think I see a, it weekend after weekend the same people just drink, 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 and then they feel horrible the next day but yes to do it and yeah I was like i don't see the point i don't see why you do that to yourself so an- another point that dr lloyd made um so him and his i believe it was his brother i think it was his brother they went to fort hayes together um i think he was a f- he was a dr lloyd was a senior he was a freshman i think if i remember correctly um but he uh he knew the importance of surrounding yourself with the right people and i mean this goes back to the people that um you just mentioned brian so he had his uh, his brother had a group of friends and they were I I almost want to say they're exactly like how you explain. And Dr. Lloyd told his brother he said you know you see those guys they're probably not going to be here next year. Sure enough, they weren't here next year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I know a few people like that that not not just because of the alcohol or because of they went out it just they, school wasn't for them and I mix of the mix of the partying and not taking care of themselves and the school being a priority. Yeah, didn't do it for him. I made sure school was a priority. I mean, I I failed the one class here. That's because I just did not like it, and yeah. it was an eight thirty class. So, yeah, it was cost accounting. Um, Oof. no, thank you. Rough. Few, yeah, few hard <laughs> classes that got me in a rut in freshman year, but I changed my life, changed the way I needed to do some things, and now I'm back on track. Good, so. good, That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's for me. I <laughs> I failed uh, two or three classes, and if there's the uh, professors listening in on that trust me it wasn't your fault <laughs> yeah no the professors no, here are great me. there's some really good professors here great yeah there's a certain law professor business law professor that i really love mr gable he's a great dude um, taught me a lot of good things about being focused on your schoolwork i mean he i guess he had like two full-time no i think he had no i think it was two full-time jobs full school 
a girlfriend all when he was in college and sports and clubs and i mean now he's a professor yeah and he's a professor went to law school i mean some of the lawyer stories he told us about insane is you really if you want to do something go and get it don't don't horse around doing all the parties and Okay, I'm not dogging completely on parties. I will say that. Yes, I mean, I time and place for them. Right, I 100% agree. I think I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad idea to have a good time every now and then to celebrate your success or just to uh, decompress. But once you make it a priority in your life, that's when you really, um, you really get into some trouble. Oh yeah, I mean, if you want to go and have a good time at the Rose on a Thursday night, go and do it. Just. Make sure you haven't scheduled an 8.30 class if you're staying till 2 in the morning. Or you have an exam, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... You have to find the right balance between prioritizing your schoolwork and your future goals and um, having a good time. I will tell you, that's the one great thing about the coronavirus right now is that everything is pretty much online for me, so I can do my homework whenever the heck I want. Oh, yeah, I told you. I was, I'm taking international finance with uh, Dr. Tulabo. Great professor, great professor. We're on, we're on campus now, right. uh, fully on campus. But um, of course, this goes back to me being a, a cheapskate. Um, I finished all the homework in the two-week free trial. <laughs> yeah, you did. I forgot. Save ninety bucks. That's uh, ninety bucks. Online codes, man. Those I can't believe he opened up the whole class and just for the two weeks. Sometimes the professors just like open up week by week. So yeah, that's how my marketing class is. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't use a free the free trial on that one. Really fortunate that none of my cl- I could have done what you did with the two week thing. I was just lazy. For what <laughs> class? Uh, I think uh, economic ideas and current issues. Okay, I was gonna say if it's for stats, then no, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I could have done that for stats, but uh, I'll just stick stats to here at Four Hayes is something different compared to NCK. I hear. I hear. I I honestly like because I took it over to summer in NCK and it uh, first two weeks that I had it on campus was nothing compared to what like so I, I took a class called quantitative methods with dr sam schreier all-time favorite professor i think him dr lloyd and dr bright favorite professors um i can't choose between dr sam and dr bright because um i feel like they both make it an emphasis to make sure one of them's better than each other which is funny as heck um <laughs> actually it was kind of a funny story i go and i go to uh, visit dr sam in his office and well i go to uh, i see his door open and then i see do- the, him uh, talking to dr bright and I'm about to leave, and Dr. Sam has a class, and he hands me a thing of Starburst, and he says, Omar, do you want this? I said, yeah, of course. And he's like, here you go. That means Emily, Dr. Bright, can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biased. I've only had um, Dr. Bright in all, right. all of my classes. Yep. So Take a class with Dr. Sam. She's got to be one of my favorite. Well, Dr. Sam, he's getting up there, though, because he gave me uh, those rice candies. Ah, uh, yes. China. Yes. Ooh, those were pretty good, Dr. So, Sam. Oh, man, <laughs> one, of the, one of the funniest things I ever remember, remember Dr. Sam. There's two things. Um, we're talking about Federal Reserve banks in uh, in money and banking, and uh, it's, he he used FR. They're called FRBs, and he, he just said Furbies. Furby. You guys remember the Furbies? They're like these little yeah. toys. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought of. Terrifying. Looking yeah. Things. Yes. And then another time, <laughs> I don't know what we were talking about, but he started talking about Szechuan chicken. You know, it's like that's Szechuan just, peppers. Yeah. Oh, those are good. That's good. Yeah. In the middle of a lecture, he just <laughs> googles it and just starts drooling. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, funniest I, things. But I any, will say General Tso Chicken is better than Szechuan, in my opinion. I, I don't think I've had either. So, yeah. Try it. But anyways, back to, I took a class called Quantitative Methods with uh, Dr. Sam. It's about regression analysis. And I learned more about stats in probably the first week than I did in the whole semester taking stats. That no says anything. Kidding. Yeah. You, you were telling me about that. And you were, you were helping me with my stats homework while you were taking that class. And I was like, how? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Um, also, another thing that Dr. Lloyd mentioned, it's crazy. Um, so we use a software called Stata. Pretty, it's pretty powerful software. It seems pretty basic, but it's far more complex than, than, than it looks. Um, so companies, they just make millions and millions and, and billions and billions yeah, and say, billions yeah, of, of, do- <laughs> yeah, of dollars just on regression analysis predicting, you know, I don't know whatever interest rates and whatnot. So it's pretty powerful to very, very uh, beneficial class, but... Learned a lot more about stats first week than I did uh, in the actual stats class. Interesting. So. Well, I want to I want to go back to where we first began. You were a Boy Scout, I believe. Tell us a bit a bit about about that and how it impacted your life and career choices. Well, Boy Scouts. Well, uh, <laughs> well, anybody who's listening, Boy Scouts, it might seem like a little kid's thing. For some people, it is like Cub Scouts and whatnot, but it's actually a really good life builder. 
I mean, you'll learn a lot of good... Uh, well, I mean, I'm mostly talking to the men here. For the ladies, it can also apply. But for Boy Scouts, it really does teach you how to be a good guy, like a good man. Um, I mean, you. Um, whenever you go camping, we do something called Leave No Trace. And I take that to heart because I am one who really doesn't like physical pollution. I mean... Absolutely. I mean, there's the whole global warming thing, but I focus a lot more on physical pollution because that'll clutter up our oceans and kill wildlife a lot quicker than I think uh, CO2 in the atmosphere will. But yeah, leave no traces. When you go camping, make sure it looks exactly like when you left it. So as I mean, if you had trash on the ground, go and pick it up and go back and forth on the campground and make sure uh, it's only pine needles left behind. So um, small things like that, um, obviously the scout law, uh, all every single all 12 of those points in the scout law it's good for your soul um, I actually ended up working out at a Spanish Peak Scout Ranch in Colorado for two months I think it was is that the one that caught on fire <laughs> yeah 2013 it caught on fire and uh, yeah I think our buddy RJ lost his Xbox in that. oh man yeah he lost a lot of stuff <laughs> I know that oh, totally so sad I didn't know he had his Xbox there. yeah he had his Xbox because uh, if you're on staff there's a building in there and there is one TV, I think, and you can hook an Xbox up to it if you have some free time on a rainy day. Is there an <laughs> internet connection out there? Or just like, uh, I'm going to spitball and say they don't. Uh, I'm going to so go with that. Do I don't think Bears Xbox. use Wi-Fi. I don't know. Play uh, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign over and over and over. No. Yeah, Brian, come on. There's such thing as uh, <laughs> offline play. Well, I mean, nowadays, I guess I just think of all these games. I just have. You just assume everything's online. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, I just got into gaming not too long ago. So. Ooh, that's a really dangerous road to go down. Trust me. Very. <laughs> just uh, when I started to get into co- like college, like I got a right? PlayStation Four, and then just. But yeah, um, Boy Scouts though. Um, I ended up uh, joining this deal called Order of the Arrow. Uh, it's not like I joined it. You actually get um, chosen to be a part of it. <laughs> sounds it's, like a cult. It does sound like I was about to say that. It sounds like a cult to a lot of people. And, I mean. Technically, I mean, uh, yeah, it's not really a cult, but it's a cult. It's a really good little uh, section of Boy Scouts that it, it really teaches you uh, respect um, of culture. I would say there's a lot of Native American culture in the Boy Scouts. You would not think there is, but there. Okay, you probably would think there is, but there's a lot more once you get deep into Order of the Arrow, and it's really interesting. I actually really want to take interest into learning more about the Native culture before. The Europeans arrived and whatnot. Any history that's left behind of that, um, but it teaches you to respect your surroundings, right? And uh, respect your fellow brothers, help them out in need. Um, like when you, well, I guess I can't really talk too much about um, getting into it, just because quote, somebody will quote, assassinate secret. you. Yep. <laughs> There's a sniper dot on me on my back. Yep. <laughs> just kidding. No, it's not that. It's not like that serious, but it's just nice to you know. To have a little bit of secrecy. And a little bit of secrecy. So yeah. I, I will go. I won't go too deep in that subject. But Order of the Arrow teaches you a lot of respect. Um, and then uh, the Eagle Scout. I, I'm an Eagle Scout. I believe Brian over yes, here is an yes, Eagle I Scout am. too. Um, the road to Eagle Scout it really teaches you hard work. Right. Because you got to come up with an Eagle project. And do you remember how many hours you needed for that? I think. No, on the top of my head. Uh, you, you need a lot of hours to be put in that Eagle project. Um, I mean, uh, you'll go to parks and you'll see benches um, or sidewalks or a flower bed. And sometimes it'll have an insignia next to it or a, a plaque that says this was built by Boy Scout troop member, um, I don't know. Brian Growth. Right, Brian Growth. Yep. In 2016. Um, and it's just small things. You build something for your community. You have to come up with a plan. You have to draw it all up. I mean, you ha- yeah, you can get help. But you need to be the organizer of the entire thing. Kind of like a marketing plan. I believe you're going through marketing right now. Yep, horrible. <laughs> you have to come up with a marketing plan. And you, need to, you need to know every single detail and head the entire process. That's the Eagle Project. And it's really good to do that because I was young. I had no clue how to do anything like that. Right. And uh, I'm through the help with my dad, um, a fellow named Dave Geist. I don't know if you know. Yeah, you know Dave. Oh, absolutely. I do. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Geist, uh, a really good mentor back when I was in Boy Scouts. Oh, yeah. Probably still a good mentor. I haven't talked to him in a while. I need to go talk to him. Yeah, it's been a while. He's a good guy. Yeah, he really is. But Dave Geist, Andy Schoengert, um, all those guys, they really helped me out. Dr. Uh, Schoengert? Dr. Schoengert. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was just curious. Clarify. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, Justin's dad, Jay. Yes, Show. yes, <laughs> Jay Show's dad. Yeah, but um, yeah, it, it was it was just a great um, how would I say mind builder, brain builder. Right. Well, that arc at the cathedral of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Dodge that was that uh, that little play arc that they have that was yes. built by Boy Scout, wasn't it? I think so. I don't know. Maybe it was the way before us. It was probably before us. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Yeah. Now it's all run down, actually. But yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I haven't been down there. I personally, I made a, a commercial for a food pantry there in Dodge City, and uh, I had it. Uh, Dodge City has a really huge Lat, uh, Latin American culture there. Yep. So I had it actually translated into Spanish and English. Ah. Or, translated into English. I had it translated into Spanish from English. No, you translated to English from English. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So <laughs> um, it was a commercial that was played on the radio and uh, a video that you could post on YouTube if you wanted, and. Uh, it was just a really great project because then I got to meet people in the Mana House, um, really meet, uh, understand some of the stories of people that are in need that you don't hear on the daily basis. Like Dodge City, you wouldn't think there's a lot of homeless people. Well, there's some. Oh, man. it's There's some. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of people struggling. I'll tell you about that in a bit. Yeah. And there, there, it's some crazy stories where it's like, wow, there's really people out here like surrounding me every day that I don't see them, but they're there and they need help. Yeah. You don't see the struggles of people. Yeah. So it really opened my eyes. Yeah. I feel like Latin Americans are pretty proud. Um, yeah. Yeah. They can be. Yeah. They, uh, they, they, the men can be macho men. But, um, yeah, to, to, to kind of piggyback off of that. So, of course, my mom works for the Catholic Church. She's a director of religious education. Um, so every Thanksgiving and Christmas, I believe, maybe it's just one or the other, but um, she gets national beef or Cargill. They'll donate a bunch of turkeys uh, to the church, and then we'll, uh, they'll pick out families in need, and we'll go deliver it to them. Um, church will, depending on the family, they'll give them a turkey and a gift card, like a $50, $100, whatever gift card to, uh, you know, to— you know, have a Thanksgiving meal that they wouldn't have had otherwise because uh, right. of financial constraints. But I remember delivering them with my mom. I was in like ninth or tenth grade, mm-hmm. which was like my cockiest days. I mean, I was a, I was a, I, I had, a, I was a sophomore at the time. I was on the basketball team, so obviously I had a big head. I wasn't even varsity. I was JV, and I was a cocky. <laughs> Goodness gracious! Basketball in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I remember um, there was this kid that. Uh, um, he he didn't grow up on my block, um, but he would go visit because he he uh, he would stay with a friend that lived there, lived on my block, and we used to like we just <laughs> you know the, the, there's that kid in the neighborhood that kid you you grow up with or you know that somebody you know that everybody to just you just, you just mess with like mm-hmm. yes yeah <laughs> you just pick on him yeah that was that kid I know one now <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah we just we just pick on him we would just pick on him. And, you know, it was, I wasn't, I just look back and I'm like, man, I'm so mean. But, uh, um, there, there's a kid back in those days that, yeah, I, I feel really bad. He was, he was a mentally disabled kid too. So it made me feel, oh my worse. goodness. I did. Yeah. I was a really dumb kid. Yeah. I, I've grown up a lot since. Then. Well, good, good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we would just, we would just pick on him and like, sometimes you'd cry and we thought it, we thought it was funny. You know, that's how, I don't know. Maybe if it's if it's uh, maybe somebody else has that same experience, or I'm just an extremely horrible person. But we would pick on him a lot, and mm-hmm. um, so we go to uh, me and my mom go deliver these turkeys at at this trailer park down south, yeah. south of town. And um, I, I liked it doing them by myself because you know you hand somebody a turkey and they're like so surprised, they're so happy. Yeah. Um, you know they hug you and like say, "Oh, God bless you, thank you, thank you so much." So. Mm-hmm. I uh, I opened the door or the I opened the door. No, I didn't knock. No, I go and knock on uh, this person's house. They opened the door. They opened the door. Yeah, I didn't open the door. Uh, they opened the door and it's uh, it was him, uh, the guy we used to pick on. Uh, yeah, and um, hand him the turkey and he said, "Hey, you're from the church, man. Like, uh, happy they have happy Thanksgiving." Mm-hmm. And I uh, I go back in and come to find out, um, his dad, uh, like just abused the living heck out of him and his family oh, wow. like out of his mom out of oh, him that's terrible. so yeah i think that's probably the only time like i'm not an emotional person but i think that was one of the first times in my life where i'm like oh my goodness like you really don't know what somebody's going through because mm-hmm. imagine being that kid and getting picked on when you're hanging out with your friends and then to come home and then you know you come home to that environment right. like my goodness that's that's why like i mean i'm we i tease my friends a lot but 
Well, yeah. If you don't tease your friends, are they really friends? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So that was really eye opening. I, I remember like even sitting in the car and just like starting to tear up because I'm like, man, like that's horrible. Yeah. And you really don't realize how good you have it until you know you see somebody else in a worse position than you. Yeah. It's crazy. I, well, and that kid that I kind of picked on a little bit. I mean, I didn't really pick on him a lot, but it was like there were some easy shots that I could take, and I was a kid that <laughs> I I wasn't really a popular kid myself, so whatever shot I could get, that would probably be like, oh hey, I'm tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it just happened to be the mental kid, and I uh, I felt bad. Yeah. Uh, you live well, and you learn. I feel. I still feel terrible. It's like I can't take that back because right. I don't know if that did anything to him. Yeah, you really never know, but I guess. Uh, you know, what do you do? You just hope that people forgive and yeah. forget. At least I'm friends with them now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we're good now. Yeah, yeah good to hear. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm a big uh, I'm a big uh, UFC fan, and uh, one of my favorite fighters, named George St. Pierre, he has kind of had a similar story, okay. except he was the one that used to get bullied. He was, uh, he was Canadian, um, but he was like the smallest guy in school, and he would go on a bus uh, to school, and uh, uh, there was a bully that would just, I guess, beat the living heck out of him uh every single day on the bus and uh his uh his dad or i guess uh george's uh uh, st pierre his dad like talked to the bully's dad and i guess he was an alcoholic and so i guess Uh, he i mean that's just what he learned at home so that's what he felt like he had to do and then um flash forward uh 15 years in the future and i guess gsp talks about it on joe rogan experience the podcast Right. He uh, he says that uh, he's driving through Canada. I don't know where he's from, like Toronto or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, he sees a homeless guy, and he it's the guy who used to bully him. Holy cow! Yeah, that is ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah, so we went from uh, bullying George St. Pierre to living. Uh, he was living on the streets, and uh, they had an encounter, and uh, he gave him all the money he had on him, and. I guess uh, that kind of motivated him to like get a job and whatnot, but that's good. It's really crazy how uh, how things how life changes. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Be superior to your former self. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, never stop growing, never stop learning. Yeah, big uh, big lesson for the readers today. Grow, be better. Well, hopefully they're not reading this. Hopefully they're listening. Did I say reading? My yes. Bad. <laughs> yes. So yeah, uh, it, was kind, I meant? it was it was kind of funny. We were talking about Minecraft earlier, and uh, Brian and I were played Minecraft um, online, mm. and uh, uh, we were building a fortress. It's still up, but we have a like a river around our our place. Okay. Uh, we were on creative, and I spawned so many fish that it it, uh, it made the game lag. <laughs> like I was like, pond, probably creating a bridge or something. And Omar goes up to it, spawns a whole bunch of fish on me. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? The game just crashes. It was about to. Like it it was yeah. legitimately lagging. Um, yeah, so it was kind of funny. You mentioned uh, uh, gaming being uh, like addicting and, and a bad idea. Um, it, uh, I was I was talking to Fanny the other day, and um, she she asked me if uh, if I pl- well I asked her if she played Minecraft. She said yeah, and then she didn't she didn't know that you could play uh, Minecraft on like you could play PlayStation uh, with oh, yeah. Xbox with PC because that mm. day that you had me you and Sean. Oh, that uh, we, was so fun. Yes, yes. So, so fun. Yeah. So you talk about dangerous. Like imagine uh, playing Minecraft and not even just playing Minecraft, playing Minecraft with, with your girlfriend. Yeah. 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 They get out of hand. Yep. Yep. So <laughs> we need to do that again. see how that goes. Especially <laughs> when your girlfriend's like 700 miles away and you're like standing next to her in Minecraft. Oh, yes. Hands. Yes. We can stand <laughs> next to each other in Minecraft, Savannah, if you're listening. That's cute. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to have to take out here pretty quick. Um, I think we're out of time for the day. Yeah, right on. Well, appreciate you being here, Matt. Uh, good to hear a little bit about you and your experiences. So Thank hopefully we'll have much. you on again sometime. All right. Yeah, love to. Absolutely. Thanks for joining. Mm-hmm. We'll see you guys.